this is Lady Boulay, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. Well, today I've entitled the video, It's Time for Dark-Skinned Women to Celebrate. Colorism has been a problem in the black community for as far back as I can remember. It's always been there, but we've kept it swept under the rug, hidden in the closet, and not talked about it very much out in the open. Although, we have felt it. If you're not very light-skinned and can pass for white, you have felt it. When I came to YouTube in 2017, the content creator Chrissy was talking about dark-skinned women and girls and she is a staunch supporter of dark-skinned women and girls at first I thought well you know it really isn't that bad it's really not that bad but the more you listen to what men say you realize it is that bad dark-skinned women have held the black community down for a long time when our folk got off those slave ships they were pretty much all dark-skinned and dark-skinned women were doing the thing way back then but the longer we have been here and the more we have assimilated into the European style culture, a pecking order was established and the darker you are, the lower you go on the totem pole. You are the least desirable, the least respected, the least anybody is concerned about. That seems to be what has happened to us. So, it's gotten to the point that being dark-skinned, and Dr. Martin Luther King said this, it's a stigma. Just being dark-skinned has become a stigma, and that has affected the self-image and the self-esteem of black women and girls. I'm speaking of all black women because we've all been through it. But the darker you are, the more you feel the scorn, the humiliation, the mocking that has become so popular among black American men. It used to be the black of the berry, the sweet of the juice. But now it's the darker you are, the greater the scorn. And there are different levels of it. As far back as the 1950s and 60s, if you could pass the brown paper bag test, you could get by. But now it has gone way past the brown paper bag test. Now you got to be up there with Frosty the Snowman or you just don't make it with these guys. And it doesn't matter about your character. It doesn't matter what you look like, evidently. It doesn't matter about your size. Just so you don't remind them of their black selves. Some black men, especially on social media, and this is where all of this is taking place on these social media platforms. But they have had, uh, or they have given themselves an ego boost by mocking black women and even teenage girls, sometimes with white women and teenage white girls. That's the action. Now, Newton's third law says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And now we're starting to get the equal and opposite reaction from women and girls. And I think we're all just a little bit surprised by it. So I'm going to show you a video and then I'm going to explain what I mean by that. This incident took place at Bider High School in Bider, Texas. Pause for the phone number to call. If you go to the website, you click on those three dots, go to campus directory, faculty directory. You can send an email to the principal or any of the three APs. It's my understanding that very little has been done about this incident to address the problematic and unsafe behavior caused by these children. And I think it's in these moments that we need to use our voices to call out the district and the leadership of that school to make sure something is done so that black kids don't feel unsafe. I'll be sending an email later. Have a good one. What you saw at the beginning of the video were high school girls, three teenage white girls in Vitor, Texas, yelling the N word into the camera on a TikTok video, which went viral. And the explanation was that they were just tired of being called racist. And that was their response. Now, the reason I say that this is the opposite reaction is because these are the type of girls 
that young teenage black boys have been on TikTok making videos about black girls. Those girls did not specify black girls. They were just saying the N-word over and over and over again. And they said it boldly and with venom. And now you have a black man, and I believe he's genuinely concerned. He seemed really concerned. But he is the one that's upset about it. And this is the type of women that they choose as a preference. And not saying that that's what he does, but that's what they've been saying. Vital Texas is a sundown town. A sundown town is a town that tells black people, do not let sundown get you here. Be gone by sundown. These, um, these white flight communities function as sundown towns. And they feel the same way they've always felt. And he, this young black man, is expressing seemingly outrage or maybe even surprise. I'm waiting to see what black women have to say about it. But so far, I haven't heard a black woman say anything about it. Because black women understand the climate we're in. And a black woman would neither be surprised and probably wouldn't be that much outraged by it. Because it's the same old stuff that they've always done. The saying is from Maya Angelou, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them the first time. So we've seen this over and over and over again. So this is a reason for black women to celebrate. Because black women are vindicated. All of all that hard work that black men have put in trying to bond with these women and trying to ally with these women, this is what you get. And people say, well, it was just a few of them. All of them wouldn't do that. That's the culture that they operate in. All of them would do that. That's the whole point. They all would do that. Under the right circumstances, you make them mad or something comes down that they don't like and you're involved and you're anywhere around, they would do it because they do experience a kind of privilege. And that privilege supersedes anything that has to do with black men. These women will always show who they are. And it doesn't matter how much money, how much loyalty, how much love, how much whatever they're willing to leave on the table. It doesn't matter how much they leave on the table. They will never be to these women what they seem so desperately wanting to be. They will never be that. Now this next video is telling on a different level, but it's also telling. This is telling that this is the beginning of the end of black women truly just blindly following along with black men. In this compilation of videos, you see black women, young black girls with their white boyfriends or white friends engaging in some kind of racist, I think, maybe slave play or some kind of humiliation that the, black, that the white guy is doing to the black girl. In some cases, the guys seem like they're surprised and they're playing Wade in the Water, which is a spiritual. And one of the YouTubers, one of the black male YouTubers from Manosphere, from the Manosphere, said that they were Caribbeans or Africans and they're making fun of African Americans and all of that. I don't know what they're doing and who they are, and it really doesn't matter because whatever they're doing is really not that important. The point is. They're doing two things. They're proving to black men they can get white men on some level if they want them. And they're also proving that they don't care what black people think about them, including black men. Now, is that a reason to celebrate? I really don't think this is a reason for black women to celebrate. But what I think it is, is this black women trying to break the emotional bond that they have with black men where they care about what black men think. And it's a victory for black women only to the extent that by breaking the emotional bond of caring what another group of men or another group of people think about you, you free yourself from that group of people. Then you can actually make better choices for your own life. So this is why I say it's time for dark skinned women to celebrate. Number one, if you are a black woman who has been hurt by black men bragging and boasting about their preferences and their options, that's over. What they're doing is what another YouTuber says. They're nesting in another man's community, trying to be relevant to somebody who does not see them as being relevant. And they are 
and they are trying to weaponize their access to other races of women to make you feel like there's something special that they're not. So if anything else, this little video and also other things that we've seen in the past, such as a white woman taking a, a weapon and turning the lights out of a man that had been boasting about her being his ideal woman and how much better she was than black women. And then she showed him in a very profound and dramatic way that she didn't feel the same way about him. These things have imploded on black men. So if you're a black woman who has been hurt by all of this languaging and all of this, all of this public display of humiliation towards you, then I think it's a time to celebrate because that's over. That's over for them. They can keep doing it, but right now, our black women should be able to see through it by now. And number two, we have seen now that black women who choose to exercise options and to choose a preference can do that because black women, we are seeing more and more that black women can get any kind of man that they want. And it is time to break the emotional bond with black men where you care about them and they don't care about you. It is time for that to be over. There are perfectly good black men in this country. And the goal for everybody is to find their right mate. And finding your mate has to do with finding the man that's right for you. Not caring about what every black man on the sun does, thinks, or says. I believe that if you find your own purpose in life and operate in that and be the best person that you can be doing what you were sent to this planet to do, and if you are spending every day of your life in a purposeful manner and you really want a mate, I believe that the universe can provide all of your needs. I believe that. Now, I know black women are getting a lot of advice about marrying out and exploring these options with these other races of men. Now, according to scripture, we're not supposed to be marrying other races of people. And that goes for black men and black women. I know what the challenges are, but that's what the scripture says. And it says it for a special reason. Because when you marry outside your race and your culture, it takes your mind off God and it places it on your spouse. And that really creates a clash of beliefs and values. Being equally yoked in understanding, in temperament, in how you see the world, those things are very important in a marriage. If you are of the same race and cultural background, you have a better chance of being in one accord on those things. And that does make for a more congenial relationship between a husband and a wife. Hollywood would have us think that falling for some mysterious stranger or some exotic person is what would bring you happiness. But that's probably not true. Where well, you're going to find the most peace, contentment, and happiness is with someone who's more like you. I realize how many people get anxious and they get impatient. So you, everybody has to be persuaded by their own opinion. I just think that we're supposed to be marrying each other. And there is a penalty that goes with that. And we see the outcome of that all the time. All you have to do is look at the, look at the people who are in the limelight who are doing it. I believe that these things have been shown now for black women, for dark-skinned black women who have felt compromised or humiliated. I believe these things are being shown now for you to take back your power and to take back your lives because you're not made to feel bad about who you are based on your skin tone, your hair type, or your features. So this is a time for dark-skinned women to celebrate because you're free. You're free of other people's preferences and what other people think and what how other people feel about you. You're free to create your own life create your own path, and live your own life in your own way. Just stay connected to the truth fine and be true to yourself, and your happiness will come. Thank you for listening. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.